G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. It's Jesse here and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through my AFL Fantasy side and my selection process. Now I'm getting a lot of people asking in the comments of videos, do I do Super Coach? To be honest, it's not something we've done previously or myself, I've never actually played Super Coach before, but I am thinking about starting a league this year and getting involved. Nonetheless, uh, I certainly have done AFL Fantasy in the last couple of years. If you've been watching the channel for a few years, you'll know that we do a league every season. Uh, this is gonna be no different. So uh, I'm gonna set up an AFL Fantasy League and leave the invite code in the description of this video and maybe even pin the comment as well. So uh, if you're watching this video, feel free to join the league. We had like over 100 people join last year and it was really lots of fun. I might do the same for Supercoach as well, just bear with me, but for today's video, we're just gonna go through my AFL Fantasy team and why I've picked the players that I have. Now, I am definitely not an AFL Fantasy whiz, as I'm sure you'll remember if you watched last year. I finished pretty much like mid-table, and that's probably generous, actually. That being said, I feel like I've learned a lot, I've gotten better, and I'm hoping this year I give the top 10 a real good shake. I think pretty much the main new thing from AFL Fantasy this year is that they've added that second utility spot, or instead of the second ruck, you get a utility position that you can have basically an extra bench spot for any other kind of player, which I think is interesting and really good because frankly, I think a lot of us didn't use our second rucks last year. I think it was just my, I think mine, I just had like Darcy Cameron for pretty much all of the season. He didn't play a fucking game. But we'll start this looking at my team from the top to bottom. So obviously starting with the defense and I'll get my team up on the screen here. So in the back six positions, I've kind of organized it. So the top three are the guys I spent more on and the bottom three are sort of like my younger, sort of like, what do you call them, low budget kind of types. So to start off, I went for a kind of mid-priced option in Dan Houston. Um, I'm sure the pair will enjoy that one because he's kind of a defender, but I think he's expected to play more midfield this year. And I'm anticipating he'll probably be a good value selection over that 596 value. Tom Stewart picks himself as absolute jet. I don't really need to explain that one. Same thing with James Sicily. Um, obviously, he's probably approaching the peak of his career now. He's getting a bit older now, so I suspect he's going to improve. Um, so hopefully that translates in fantasy points. Hayden Young is, in my opinion, one of the um, biggest contenders for the Rising Star, I think. I think he'll play most games at Fremantle. They're all, they're all very um, bullish about him over there from what I can gather, so I expect he starts round one and uh, I can see him getting a fair bit of the ball. So at 258K, that's pretty good value. Brandon Starcevich is a player I think uh, probably hasn't, well, maybe hasn't come on as quickly as I suspected when he got drafted. I think he's a really talented player up there at Brisbane, but they've kind of, they've had a good injury run the last few years, and obviously they've been successful last year, so it's pretty hard to crack a game for them. But at 189K, I think he's really good value because I think he'll play games this year. Hopefully he starts round one, um, but that one, I might, I might switch him out if he doesn't get picked, obviously. Uh, and that's the same with Will Day, Hawthorne's first, uh, well, earliest draft pick since uh, 2006 that I keep harping on about in other videos. But if he cracks a game early, I think he'll be good value. He's, uh, he's an outside type, very skillful as well, very quick, so I can see him doing pretty well early should he be given the opportunity. But that one obviously pens on um, how they select him. On the bench, I have gone for Matthew Ling and Jez McLennan from Gold Coast and Sydney, respectively. I just think these guys are two fairly good sort of halfback talents that might be close to getting a game. They've both been on the list for at least a couple of years now. Um, I think McLennan was highly rated, but I'm not actually too sure what his deal was last year. He might have been injured. I can't, I, I can't imagine why he didn't play too many games, but, um, or he hasn't played at all, I don't think. But I, I know he's highly rated, so I reckon as an intercept defender, he's probably one player they want to give an opportunity to early. So, um, yeah, that one's obviously a bit of a hope, but at 170K, that's a base price, so worth the risk. Moving on to the midfield, and we've got Lockie Neal, who kind of picks himself almost, because, you know, such a good fantasy player. He's been consistent for a number of years, even before he got to Brisbane, but uh, I expect he'll be just as consistent this year. Tom Mitchell coming off a broken leg is a little risky, obviously, because um, obviously he's coming off a really bad injury, so does he come back quite as well? I'm not 100% sure, but I think at 671k for the fantasy player that he can be, I think that's really good value. Tim Kelly, I kind of picked just uh, because around that range, he's an Eagles player and I just kind of wanted him. Um, so that's why I picked him and pressed you the same. By the time I pick those, because I usually pick my primos towards the end, those were sort of the best options I could get with those last two midfield options anyway. Marlian Pickett, an obvious choice. I'm sure everyone has him in their team being the base price mature age player that's probably going to play round one um, at the very least. So uh, pretty good value there. 
I've gone for the number two, one and two draft picks last year, Matty Rao and Noah Anderson, who uh, played an intra club today, and I think Rao in particular played really well. I expect certainly Rao will start round, round one. There's always a risk that Anderson might not, but I, I suspect they'll probably both play pretty early, so um, I'm hoping that one pays off. And Dylan Stevens is another player I think will go close to the rising star this year. He's good enough to play round one for Sydney, in my opinion. So I'm hoping they, uh, they repay the faith there and uh, give him some early games. But um, I think he is a really good choice there. And then I've picked the two midfielders, Ned McHenry, um, who's a, obviously a base price player and a high draft pick for Adelaide last year. And I think for where they're at, they're going to give games to these sorts of guys. He'll get an opportunity early. And Cooper Stevens, Geelong's uh, number, I think he was their first draft pick this year, actually, um, in a year where Tim Kelly's just left. Jack Stevens started the year injured. He might get a gig early, especially because they are not afraid to play the youth over there. Now let's move along to down to the rucks. I've gone with two of the better premium options. Obviously, Gorn is injured, so I went with Grundy and Rowan Marshall. I did debate internally whether or not I was going to pick these guys. Uh, Grundy's just so expensive at 906k, but he's also so consistent. So if he's your captain every week, it's like having two play uh, two extra players on the field. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I couldn't go past that one. And then Luke Jackson, I considered being risky and putting him in the Ruck 2 position and using the money elsewhere, but I decided not to in the end. Um, I'm thinking with Gorn out, he gets a gig early. I'm hopeful. But I don't think he's the sort of player who will play 22 games, so that's why I ultimately decided that he would be a better bench option and cash cow sort of um, player there. Moving on to the forward line, another guy that I was one of my first picked is Lockie Whitfield, who was obviously one of the best fantasy players last year. Hence, he's 180, oh, sorry, 844k. Um, if he plays anywhere like he did last year, that's pretty good value. Um, it's just always the risk that he gets injured. Cody Waitman is an extremely talented small forward just drafted the Bulldogs. I think he's good enough as well, like some of those other young guys I picked, to play early. And um, I think he's talented enough to do well early. I actually think he's another chance for the Rising Star as a sneaky little option. Maybe not win the Rising Star, but I think he'll feature pretty high, sort of like a Grian Myers did. Um, actually, I don't know where Grian Myers ranked in the Rising Star, but you know what I mean. Had a very good sort of season as a small forward. And Toby Green as well, playing, I think, more midfield time than ever last year. Um, and he was sensational. He just was probably one of their, arguably their best player when he came back into the side. Andrew Brayshaw as a mid-priced option because uh, I'm picking on value there because he's, he's a mid-forward, obviously. And I think under Longmuir there, he's going to be playing probably full-time midfield minutes. And even if you don't necessarily think he's an absolute gun, I think he's the sort of player who will rack up a lot of the ball. I think he had a three-goal, 26-posy game last year. I'm not sure how many fantasy points it was. But my point being, if he gets a lot of opportunity, I think he'll be good value at 500k. Mitch Jordiatis, I think if he plays early, which I suspect he will, there's an article today saying he might. Um, he's a real X-factor sort of uh, medium tall forward option. Not so much like, I think he's kind of like a, almost like a freaky kind of Gunston sort of player. I don't know, off the top of my head, there's a pretty weak sort of um, explanation. But point being... Uh, if he cracks games early, he probably will justify that 236k price. And then finally, I've got Dustin Martin. So you can actually see I've actually spent quite a lot in my forward line and comparatively less in my back line. Um, so I don't know if that will pay off, but we'll see how that goes. And um, pleasingly, I think there's two really obvious choices for bench in the forward line. Isaac Rankin is and Max King are both... Really, really good plays from um, 2018 draft. Is that right off the top of my head? Yeah, it was the 2018 draft. Um, both were injured through their first seasons. Almost certainly both are going to play early this year. I think Max King booted four in an intra-club game recently. Rankin played in, in Gold Coast intra-club, but I think he kicked a goal. I'm not sure how many fantasy points he's really going to get, but he's going to play games. So, long-winded answer. That's why they're clearly the best two choices for the bench. You could probably even start them both on the field. And as my final choice, I've gone for Harry Schoenberg as my second ruck slash utility position. Um, he's a midfielder from South Australia who was uh, Adelaide's second round draft pick. And again, same as Ned McHenry, I feel like um, he's going to get games early and he is a ball winning sort of midfielder. So I'm hoping that pays off, um, but we'll see. That one's a bit riskier because he's not 170k, he's 220k. So that makes, I mean, I guess the guys who made this think that he's going to play early. So hopefully they're right. 
Um, but I, I, like I said, I think Adelaide are going to give opportunities to the young guys anyway. But anyway, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of my team. Maybe give me some advice or don't try and, you know, sabotage me if you're going to be coming up against me in the league. Uh, but let me know what you thought. Again, I'm going to stress I'm not an absolute whiz on fantasy. I just enjoy it. As I always say, guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We do more AFL content, and that's just going to be coming thick and fast as we get closer and closer to round one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.